Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to Craft the World Let's Play. This is going to be my first video. I might upload two depending on how well we do. I have a nice little series of this game. This game is super addictive. The past two days, when I haven't been busy doing other things, I've been playing the crap out of this game. So let's hit play and get right into it. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I did not go to load my world, which is odd. Yes, I would like to quit. Oh, that's why. If you just hit play, it brings you in. Huh, herp derp So let's choose level. We are going to delete this file. It got messed up, but as you can see here, I put exactly 11 hours into the campaign. Yeah, 11 hours. So here you get different levels. You start out here, and so you get the portal to be able to be completed to come here. And you gotta do the same here, and then you come here, and then you can beat that, and then you can play whatever level you want. Now, you can do, if you look, you can do a new custom game. You can change the size, the weather events, the world type, the tech, tech mode, permadeath, normal, difficulty. I'm not actually sure. I've been watching videos saying that you can't play custom games with the actual tech tree. You gotta go find them. So, if you guys are interested and want to see that, let me know. We can just do something where we don't have to follow guidelines and stuff. You, we can figure out, you know, all the custom settings and stuff. Obviously, I'd probably go with a large world, medium, medium large. Let you guys decide, and then we can decide the weather events, the world type, tech trees. Now, obviously, if we go with desert, obviously the weather event should be either rare or maybe average. With ice world, we could go average or frequent. Same with forest world. Then. You can either choose sandbox, which sandbox I believe everything's unlocked and you just need to know the recipes. The tech tree probably will follow the main thing, so we'll see here, but the first video will be a little bit longer, probably about 20 minutes, just because of explaining everything. So we're gonna start. We're going to do a new campaign. It is small, world type is forest, weather events are average, topography is hills, difficulty is easy. Alright, so you start out, and you get a nice little door for your explaining everything. So, congratulations, we did it. We opened an ancient portal to this new world. Unfortunately, we have enough power for sending only one dwarf right now. Look around and start building your fortress. No one knows how dangerous it may be here. Open the diary book with instructions we prepared for you. So, it's that new task. Pay attention to your tasks, complete them to or an award. Now if you've done this already you can click skip tutorial and you never have to deal with anything from these guys again. I'm just going to do it for right now just to get through the basic stuff quick and then I'll probably just click that if it pops up anymore because I already know what I'm doing. But basically you're beginning, you gotta dig a tunnel, cut a tree, complete a shelter. Obviously the first thing you do is cut a tree so alright beast retab. Now this will show all the creatures you've met in this world. Now you can see here it's 21 pages that's because it actually plays like if you have other campaigns I believe even if you were just played the sandbox mode right away any animals you collect will actually just stay in this book which is pretty cool so we have the hen the sheep we have and they're harmless they'll tell you if they give anything or what they're used for then you have the wild boar which is slightly dangerous you got the sub which is harmless skeleton skeletons with shields a ghost, a big zombie, a zombie, a giant mite, a goblin, a skeleton builder. And let me tell you, goblins are insanely annoying. You don't know when they're coming. They just randomly appear when they feel like it. I've been actually surprised with them a couple times where they've stolen stuff from my thing, which is annoying. Then you get larva, which they're really not even slightly dangerous. They're just a nuisance. Cave spirits, giant spiders. These right here actually do become a big nuisance just because they end up taking over caves along with some other things they don't have in this book. Which kind of confuses me why it's not in here. It should be in here is maybe slightly dangerous. I don't know. But this guy right here. Yes. These two. Holy hell. They are extremely dangerous. This guy will mess your world up. I actually took one out in full 
Because I no, I wasn't full steel yet. I was in leather and had steel weapons and used all of my mana to kill that guy. Do not recommend doing this guy until you're pretty well geared. They say mithril. You can do before mithril, but I don't recommend it. Giant skeleton. They're not super terrible. I mean, they they do hurt pretty bad, but they're not crazy. Beholders. They are pretty powerful. I feel like the beholders are worse than the giant skeletons, but that's just me. Giant ants. They say dangerous. In my opinion, they're not dangerous. Yeah, they keep spawning until you kill the ants to blow up the nest, but they're really not that bad. And then imps, these will help you when you get later down the tree. And there's some more beasts that I don't have yet because they're from other worlds. So, enough. We don't need any instructions. Let's get started. Cut several trees to get resources. Mark the bottom the nearest tree. So, now I can just skip a tour of the rest of this. Just him talking about what we need to do, which isn't important. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut down the tree check out our world this is a very very cruddy world wow this is cruddy so we got 10 experience for cutting down the tree I may actually do a restart on this for my next episode and just get a little set up because this is a very terrible oh wow this is extremely terrible it wouldn't be so bad if it didn't have this setup it does here with the two lakes. If they were further out, that wouldn't be a problem, but it's kind of nothing really growing here. It makes this beginning kind of difficult, to be honest. I mean, you could get dirt and fill this all in with dirt and then go somewhere else and make another lake, but it's just quite of a nuisance to have to do that. So, okay, that's not ready for collecting, so we're not going to do that. So let's get some wood. So now, you see their heads crafting a seven. It alerts you when you have new things you can craft. Portal spell, you use that quite frequently. So now let's click on the club, and you see here's wood. So if we get wood, if you double click, it will put it in the adjacent squares if there is room. So let's craft two, because we're gonna get two people. We leveled up, so now we got some new things. We can make ladders, a hatch, a log bridge. The log bridge is useless. Don't bother even wasting resources on it. Okay, so now this is random. When you level up, you get random things. Before, you don't always get this, but before that's been something besides wood. So, that's pretty cool. Yep, totem. Yep, thank you. This is your level, uh, XP level here. This is your level. This is your clock to tell you the time. Custom signs. This is your tech tree. You can see where you are, how far in research you are, what unlocks what. Some of these, you actually need to complete all the rows in order to unlock the next one which is kind of a nuisance especially when you get further down here they make you do it my other playthrough I'll sh maybe show you guys in a special episode of craft the world is I'm way down here almost actually where am I yeah I just gotta complete this here the expert weaponry and then oh no, no wait a minute let me think no we're actually right before I ended the episode or the game I was actually here I unlocked this and I need to unlock this to get engineering, which I really want because they have Tezacore and elevators, which are very nice, and a warehouse you can make to store items. So every time you get new tasks, they'll pop up here to tell you what you gotta do in order to get it. You got your notes here explaining what's next, advanced resource acquisition, how to use magic, advanced construction. You have your population, how many are working, if none are working new technology there's your mana how many mana you get every I believe it's three minutes you get one mana unless you level you get full mana this you can click and then it doesn't allow them to leave the shelter so let's get that let's get this guy to chop down a tree I really would like to lower this but I don't think that will come down so like I said we're just gonna do this episode and then I will try to get another world quick and set it up but I just want to go through the basics with you. In the beginning, mites are actually kind of dangerous. As you can see, I almost took down a heart there. So, let's cut that down. And we want to get more stone. So, every time you get something new, it will come in here and alert you. And then, if you get stone before, even if you run out of stone, I don't believe it will pop up anymore. I've never really paid attention just because I focus a lot into actually playing. But, we're going to get this set up now that we have so. You see I put it in the middle there and double clicked, it put it all here. If I would have put it in the top and double clicked, I don't believe it would have these two. I think it only did this one. So as you can see there's stone over here. If I click, it doesn't put it over there because it's not adjacent. So let's put it there. 
Now, if it's diagonal, it'll do it, but if there's a space, it won't. And as you can see here, if I build this, it will actually take my yellow meter sh to there. So that's good. And as the more you craft these, it will actually decrease and not make it as much. So if I do it, take it, boom, right there. See, now it's giving me less. So we go to equip. We'll equip our dwarves with weapons. And we will put it there. Okay, so then your axe goes here, your head slots go here, your chests go here, your boots go here, and then your special backpack items go there. Your food, your health, if they have any skills, which I don't think... Yeah, if you hold over, it doesn't tell you, which is disappointing. I, I kind of wish they would do that. Climbing isn't the best thing yet. You see, he just fell. Now, if it was a little short or longer, sorry, he would actually took some damage. So now we have something new. We have resin. I thought I got pine cones from that, but I guess not. At least not yet, anyway. So as you can see, he's actually mining us faster now because he's not using a knife, which is good. Now, what I try to do is, when you hit level 4, is when the invasions start. You will get an invasion about every... I want to say 50 minutes. And as you progress through the game, the invasions do get bigger and bigger and then harder and harder. Now, I did get a couple of invasions in a row, even though I'm level 12, that they didn't have any bosses, they didn't have any behemoths, they didn't have any giant skeletons, so it's kind of strange, but I'm not complaining because it, it can be a little difficult. Now, you can get two invasions at once, from what I've seen in some videos. Um, if you come over here, way across the mountain, you will see these nice little graves that will spawn zombies and skeletons. Or just skeleton. I can't remember what it was. Here, once you get fishing poles, you can fish. From my understanding, from watching Paul Sore Jr. play this, I watched all 30 episodes of him before I, I bought this, just to kind of do a little catch up on it and find out what's going on. You need to leave one fish for more fish to come in here. I don't know if that's true, but I would just do it none th nonetheless. And these things were what I was talking about that become a major nuisance. If you don't get them, they grow and grow, and they can infest your tunnels just like the spiders, which become a huge nuisance. There's more over here, so this match actually has a decent amount of things. Pine cones, you can eat pine cones. If you hit I, and I'll tell you how many it feeds. So if you're not sure about something, you can click on it, and it will tell you, you know, hey, this is what it is. It shows you a little picture, it shows you how to craft it, tells you what it does, which is very nice. So let's just chop this down. I'm trying to think. So here, I'll show you a new sign. So if you find a place where you want to make a home, you can be like, okay, well, let's. I'm gonna get a home here. So we can say future home. Future home. Boom, right there. Future home. Now, I believe you can click on it and delete it, change it however you want. You can't move it. So that you always know where it is, which is nice. I have actually never used that. So, I don't know. I kind of find it useless, but let's just craft an X. Double click. Move. Double click. Boom, boom. We got two. Boom, we got a new crafting tree unlocked. So we just completed basic tool making. Now it unlocks, unlocks basic householding. Now we can make these. Beds are very important. That is the main wheel. The very main wheel. Man, I can't speak. The very main way of your dwarf's healing, which is beds. You will unlock illuminating at some point. Uh, we gotta do this, and we'll get basic armoring. I believe if we level up, it actually does unlock this at level 3. So, something I want to show you as well. If you click on this, don't click. Don't click that. Let's make another one for other guy. Okay. So, let's go to... I mean, we actually don't have anything that requires this yet. Unfortunately. But, let's go to say we were going to make the 
stone pickaxe and we click on wood okay so it brings this tab up now let's say that stone is in a different tab altogether so let's say stone's not in this one it might need something that's here in this tab here or maybe something here if you just click on it and then click the item it will bring you to that tab where the item is located usually right here in the main screen if you say let's say resins on the next page and leaves are here and you would click leaves it'll show you here but then if you click resin it won't change you actually just need to click the arrow and it will do it so if you hit bed it'll show you it's not very comfortable but easy to make bed if you click on the wooden table it'll show you a comfort comfort some comfort items are not working currently but comfort is what you use in your household to make things better for dwarves to live in I'm not sure exactly what comfort actually does I, I don't I haven't never quite understood the comfort whole thing I I'm gonna have to look into it and figure out what exactly comfort does I don't think anything here uh, health only by getting rest inside a house the house needs to have walls on all sides as well as a hatch or door for the entrance place a totem pole inside the house to scare away evil spirits install a bed for each dwarf the stronger the walls and more comfortable the interior the more rapidly the doors will regain their strength oh, okay so I guess comfort increases how well they heal that's actually quite good to know so guys I'm gonna end the episode here and I will catch you guys on the second episode with a different map and a little bit more setup so I don't have to bore you guys with all of this. Ooh, look at that. So now we just got a club. So thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, share the video if you wish. I greatly appreciate it and see you guys next time.